I want to give a big thank you to everyone who has supported this channel through Patreon or YouTube fan funding or PayPal donations. Whichever it is, thank you so much. Today's unboxing would not have been possible without you. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Hey everyone, welcome to Lachlan Likes a Thing. I'm Lachlan and I've got a treat for you today because today we're unboxing the new Sony MDR-Z7 flagship full-sized closed headphones. Now, uh, this is also going to be a first impressions video because I'm going to have some first impressions in the description of this video, but I'll also be able to give you some brief first impressions throughout this video because I actually had a chance to demo these headphones before I bought them. So. Um, I'm a bit of a Sony fan, I uh, don't love everything that they do, and in fact some of the things that they do I really don't like, but uh, I did grow up with this company so it does have a kind of special place in my heart and I think it does for a lot of you guys watching these videos. Um, now this is the return of Sony making flagship uh, products like really, you know, expensive products. This is a 799 Australian dollar product. Um, I should disclose right at the beginning of this video, I did not pay 799 Australian dollars for this headphone. Uh, I bought this from a local Sony store. I have a friend who works at that store. I was able to get a staff price for this headphone. I've been asked to uh, you know, not say what the staff price is, so I won't, but I should let you know now that it was a substantial discount. So uh, I, I believe in doing things openly, so if you have any questions or concerns about that, please by all means leave a comment, but you should know that I, you know, got a pretty good deal on these headphones. The other thing is that this, uh, this actual purchase represents about two months worth of contributions from Patreon and PayPal, and I've got to say thank you so much to everyone who did contribute. I could not have bought this headphone without you, so um, cheers. Anyway, let's check out the headphone. So just on the back of the box, we have the usual kind of Sony, uh, you know, marketing speak. Uh, we have the 4 hertz to 100 kilohertz frequency response figure, which is just plainly a sort of a fiction that Sony uh, probably gets from the marketing department as opposed to the engineering department because that you know, the way that specification figure quoted is basically meaningless. We don't know anything about the drop-off or the roll-off or anything like that. Uh, and I have seen the graphs from Inner Fidelity. Tile has posted the graphs of the MDR-Z7, if you haven't seen them. Uh, and it does appear from those graphs that the MDR-Z7 exhibits significant roll-off above 10 kilohertz. So it's nothing like the Danon D7000 or the Fos XTH600. It does not ha seem to have um, high frequencies that go on forever and ever and ever. But who knows? Maybe it's just been deliberately filtered in some way. We will know when we actually have a listen to this headphone. Anyway, let's pop the box open. Now, as I said, this marks Sony's return to making expensive flagship headphones. Their last full-size closed... I actually don't... I think their last full-size closed flagship besides the MDR-Z1000, which was a monitoring headphone, which I owned and did not especially appreciate. I think the only other one was perhaps the CD3000? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think their last closed flagship was the CD3000, uh, and that was quite some time ago. So here we have the fancy, fancy black box. Box within a box. Oh, there we go. Here it is. That is a really nice looking product. Now, I've already seen it before in store, so I actually know how nice the build quality is. It is really um, a beautiful looking headphone. So as I understand, these cups are made of magnesium metal. The headband, um, you know, it has this really, really, you know, uh, premium feel to it. Everything about this headphone. The e pads are especially similar to things that you get from like Fostex or Danon e pads. They look almost like those J Money e pads that you can buy um, aftermarket. So you have a, a sort of slightly angled e pad. I can tell you when I tried these in this store, they were exceptionally comfortable. That was the thing that actually struck me the most, how comfortable these headphones are. And you'll actually observe they have very, very, very large ports. So 
we have one large port here and then I believe we have a second port right at the top here. So Sony is actually relying very much on the ports to uh, kind of tune the sound. Now let me just find the cable and I'll talk to you a bit about the actual sound of the headphone. Now when I heard the uh, MDR Z7 a few days ago in the store, uh, I can tell you it didn't wow me out of the box. Um, for a $700 headphone, my kind of reference points for a closed headphone would be something like the, the Fostex TH600, which I had a chance to listen to, and also the Danon D7000, D5000, uh, which I actually have a modded pair of that I borrowed from a friend. And those headphones really kind of impressed me out of the box because they have a, a tremendous sense of scale in the bass, the kind of low uh, tightness of that uh, the authority of that kind of low end. Um, that is really striking and also the treble extension on the other end, the, the way that the, the, the treble is just really uh, textured. It's quite forward so it's not everyone's cup of tea. I didn't love the way um, the, the Fostex TH600 had a bit of a treble spike but I couldn't deny that it was just really kind of breathtakingly shimmery. Um, I did not get actually that kind of sense of, you know, out of the box amazement with the uh, Z7. With the Z7, I feel like the sound is sort of like a, like a, a really kind of upgraded version of version of the MDR1R. So it's a very smooth, almost kind of it's it's a bit of a strange word to use, but it's creamy. It's a sort of like a smoky, very smooth, very laid back kind of sound. It's especially, um, you know, it's especially more mid bassy, I would say, than sub bassy. Uh, and I, I did get a sense that the, the bass didn't have the same kind of slam or, or the same kind of impact that uh, you'd get out of the Fostex. Now, I only listened for about, you know, five minutes. So. Again, take my opinions with a grain of salt and I will have more detailed first impressions written in the description of this video. So please check those out and I'll give you a, you know, a better impression based on some more listening. But, you know, I, I cannot say that this was a headphone that kind of made me think, oh, well, I can see why this is $700, right? Um, it's not the same as something like the Fostex uh, TH600 or even my other benchmarks for these kind of headphones are like the uh, Audizy, uh units, the planar magnetics, any one of those when you hear them, the kind of slam you get from the bass, and I always end up returning to the bass because I guess uh, I am a bit of a closet bass head, but that slam, I really appreciate the kind of sense of impact. That said, what I can say about the uh, Z7, again, beautiful looking headphone, is that it was a really cohesive signature. So. Even though uh, I didn't get the same sense of stunning, you know, uh, technicality as the Fostex TH, sorry, Fostex TH600, it was a signature that I found more agreeable overall, like just easier to listen to, um, just a, a well-tuned kind of sound. And I think that's the way with a lot of Sony headphones I've found in the past, from the Z1000 to the uh, uh, ZX700, uh, you know, all the kind of full-sized headphones that they make. I always think they may not have the best technical ability, but they're frequently tuned exceptionally well. So it depends on what you are kind of after. Now, what you can see me doing here is just screwing in these detachable cables. I believe uh, Sony has al already partnered up with some cable manufacturer to do some fancy, you know, fancy schmancy alternate cables. You know, I don't really believe in that kind of thing, but the actual stock cables themselves, as you can see, they're very chunky. That screw-in terminal itself is beautiful. I don't know if I mentioned this before, these are made in Japan. I think that kind of quality control would be uh, apparent in the product. So we have this kind of Y split here. And then on the um, this part of the cable, the actual cable length is serrated. So it has those serrations running along the length, something that Sony has kind of developed. Oh, hang on. Oh, okay. This is the wrong cable. This must be the balanced cable for other people running um, those fancy balanced amps, which I don't have. Um, and I'm dubious as to their efficacy. But 
it's good to know that you do get that cable. Let me go hunting around for the other, there we go. Apologies for that. Um, so as with the MDR1R, what I would say just, you know, again, this is based on sort of my kind of armchair engineering. Uh, I, I would say that Sony is very much relying on a uh, the port configuration to increase the kind of bass and mid bass on the MDR Z7. Now, the thing about porting uh, headphones and porting speakers, and this is what I know from from making my own speakers in various kind of projects, when you port a speaker, it improves the efficiency of the speaker and increases the bass and the mid bass, but it also means the fall off. The um, kind of roll off in the bass regions is much steeper compared to a sealed speaker. So if you compare, for instance, sealed subwoofers to to ported subwoofers, they generally recommend ported subwoofers for movies because you get that big impact and and that kind of oomph. Um, and for uh, sealed subwoofers, they tend to be better for music because they they have a much more linear kind of fall off uh, with the bass and you know, it tends to just be a bit more overall tight, as you can imagine, because a sealed subwoofer, the pocket of air inside it is is kind of, um, you know, there's less compliance, so it, it forces the driver to move in a more kind of controlled manner, whereas, uh, uh, depending on how you port it, I mean, you can get a good ported subwoofer, etc., etc., but there's more compliance in the air uh, with a ported subwoofer because the air can escape from the port. Um, and so if you compare the design of, say, the, the Z7 here with the TH600, the TH600 is a fully sealed kind of headphone. And as a result, just like the Danons and everything like that, you'll see that it exhibits very, very, very good um, bass characteristics. And I don't think the same can be said for the Z7, especially some of the people who have commented in the earlier comments, some of the earlier owners on head fire threads and stuff like that have not been super positive about that. Now, uh, I will do some more listening. There you go, it's all fully assembled. That's the detachable cable, and then this is the the 3.5 millimeter. I assume that there's a adapter in the box. Bunch of other stuff. I will have some more detailed first impressions in the description of this video. Thank you again to everyone who contributed uh, to help me get this on the channel. I seriously would not have been able to do it without you, so thank you very much. Uh, thanks again to all my regular subscribers. You can talk to me on Facebook at facebook.com slash thing or on Twitter at thing. I'm looking forward to your comments and happy listening.